In this video, we are going to build out our consensus endpoint. And it's going to use the is valid chain method that we just built out in the last video. So let's do this now. So we are going to start by saying app.get slash consensus with a callback function rec res. Cool. So the first thing that we want to do inside of our consensus endpoint is we want to make a request to every other node inside of our blockchain network to get their copies of the blockchain and compare them to the copy of the blockchain that's hosted on this current node that we're currently on. So let's do that now. We will say Bitcoin dot network nodes dot for each network node URL. We want to make a request. And this whole process will be the same thing that we've done countless times before. So the first thing we have to do for our request is define some options. So we will say const request options equals an object. And the URI that we want to hit for our request will be the network node URL plus the endpoint slash block blockchain, which is the first endpoint that we built out way up here. And from this endpoint, we receive the entire blockchain. Cool. The next option that we want to have is the method, and it will be get this time, because this endpoint uses the get method. And since it's a get request, there's going to be nobody. So our final option is just JSON true. Cool. Now we want to RP, which is request promise, our request options. And we want to push all of these requests into a promise array because each of these requests returns a promise to us. So up here we will say const request promises equals an array. And down here we will say request promises dot push all of our requests. Perfect. So once this for each loop has ran, we will have an array that's filled up with all of our requests. So now we just want to run them by saying promise dot all and passing in our request promises. Cool. Next, we want to use the data that we receive from all of these promises. So we will say dot then with the data that we receive from all of these promises, we want to do something with this data, which is what we get back after all of these promises have ran. And actually, we know that this data is just going to be an array of blockchains. It's going to be a blockchain from every node inside of our network. So instead of calling this data, we'll just call this blockchains. So this blockchains is simply an array that is filled up with all of the other blockchains that are hosted across all of the other nodes inside of our network. So now what we want to do is we want to iterate through all of these blockchains that came from the other nodes inside of our network and we want to see if there is a blockchain inside of here that is longer than the copy of the blockchain that is being hosted on our current node. So let's do this now. So we will start by cycling through all of these blockchains that we got in our responses. So we will say blockchains dot for for each blockchain we want to do something 
with each black chain. Cool. So basically, all that we want to do inside of our for each loop is we want to identify if one of the black chains from the other nodes in our network is longer than the black chain hosted on our current node. So in order to do this, we are going to want to define a couple of variables to keep track of all of our data. The first variable that we want to define is the length of the black chain that is hosted on our current node. So we will say const current chain length equals Bitcoin dot chain dot length. Cool. Now we want to define a couple of variables that will change if we come across a longer blockchain in our blockchain's array. So the first variable we want to define will be the max chain length. So we will say let max chain length equal and right now at this point before our for each loop the only chain that we have access to is the current chain. So before our for each loop, the maximum length of any chain we have access to is the current chain length. Next, we want to define a variable called new longest chain. And we're going to initially set this equal to null. And the last variable that we want to define will be called new pending transactions. And we will set this equal to null initially as well. Cool. Now, I know that all of these variables up here might seem a little bit confusing right now. But let's finish building out our for each loop. And I think everything will become a little bit more clear after that. So inside of our for each loop, we are looking to see if there is a longer chain inside of our blockchain network than we currently have on this node that we are on. If there is a longer chain inside of our network, then we are going to want to change these variables to reflect that. So inside of our for each loop, we are going to say, if the blockchain which is this blockchain, which is a single blockchain out of our blockchain's array that came from all of the nodes in our network. So if the current blockchain that we're on, dot chain, dot length, is greater than the max chain length, which is this variable up here, then this is when we're going to want to do some calculations. And all we're going to want to do inside is we're going to want to reset these variables to reflect the fact that there is a longer chain inside of our blockchain network than the one that we are currently on. So the first thing we're going to do inside of this if statement is we are going to say, if we have found that a longer chain exists, then we simply want to say the max chain length is now equal to the current blockchain that we are on dot chain dot length. Cool. The next thing that we want to do is we want to change our new longest chain variable. And we simply want to set this new longest chain variable equal to the current blockchain that we're on, since this is the longest chain we have come across so far. So we will say new longest chain equals blockchain dot chain. And finally, if we are replacing the blockchain on our current node, then we also want to replace the pending transactions on this current node with the pending transactions that are associated with the longest blockchain. So we are going to reassign this variable and we are going to say new pending transactions equals blockchain dot pending transactions cool 
And that's it for our for each loop. Now let's discuss what exactly is happening inside of here. So at the top, we have access to all of the blockchains from all of the nodes inside of our network. They are stored as an array inside of this blockchain's variable. We then store the length of the current chain that we are on, which is on this node, and the variable current chain length. We then define a variable called max chain length, and we set it equal to the current chain's length. Then, as we iterate through our for each loop and cycle through all of the other blockchains inside of our network, if there is a longer chain in the network, we simply reassign the max chain length to be the length of that longer chain. And every time that we come across a longer chain inside of the network, we are resetting this max chain length to be the length of that new longest chain. So with this variable, we always have a reference to the longest chain inside of our network. Next, we define a variable called new longest chain. And we only set this variable if we find a chain that's longer than our current chain. And every time that we come across a longer chain inside of our network, we set the new longest chain variable equal to that chain, which is the longest chain in our network so far. And finally, we define a variable called new pending transactions. And every time that we find a longer chain in our network, we update this new pending transactions variable to be equal to the longest blockchain's pending transactions. Cool. So after this whole for each loop has ran, these variables will all have been updated and our max chain length variable will be the length of the longest chain inside of our network. The new longest chain variable will be equal to null if there is no chain longer than the chain that's hosted on our current node, but this new longest chain variable will be equal to a blockchain if we come across a chain in our network that is longer than the chain on this node. And our new pending transactions variable will be null if there are no chains in our network that are longer than the chain on our current node. But if we do find a longer chain in our network, then this variable will be equal to the pending transactions of that longer chain. Cool. So after this for each loop has ran, we're going to have all of the data that we need to determine if we need to replace the chain that is hosted on this current node. Cool. So down here, we finally just want to say, if there is no new longest chain, or if there is a new longest chain, and that chain is not valid so bitcoin dot chain is valid and we pass in the new longest chain if this is not valid then in this case we do not want to replace the current chain that we're on so all we're gonna do is send back a response that says the chain on our current node has not been replaced so we will say res.json and we will send back an object that has the note that says current chain has not been replaced. And we will send back the current chain, which is bitcoin.chain. Cool. So basically what we're saying is if there is no new longest chain, meaning that the current chain is the longest, or if there is a new longest chain, but that new chain is not valid, then in these two cases, we do not want to replace the blockchain that's hosted on our current node. So we're gonna send back the note that says current chain has not been replaced. Cool. Otherwise, or else if there is a new longest chain and 
that chain is valid, so we'll say Bitcoin dot chain is valid and pass in the new longest chain. So if there is a new longest chain and that chain is valid, then in this case, now is when we want to replace the blockchain that's hosted on our current node with the longest chain in the network. So let's replace the blockchain on this current node right now. So in order to do that, we will simply say bitcoin.chain equals new longest chain. And we will also say bitcoin.pending transactions equals new pending transactions. Cool. And that's all we have to do to replace our current chain on this current node with the longest chain in the network. So all we want to do at this point is send back a response. So we will say res.json and we'll send back an object that has a note on it that says this chain has been replaced. And we will send back the new chain which at this point is now just bitcoin.chain because we already replaced it. Cool. And that's it for this endpoint. Now let's run through top to bottom real quick exactly what's happening in this endpoint. So the first thing that we do in this endpoint is we make requests to all of the other nodes in our network so that we can access the blockchain that is hosted on each of those other nodes. After we run all of these requests, we then have access to all of the blockchains that are hosted on all of the other nodes inside of our network. So this variable right here is an array of all the other blockchains inside of our network. We then iterate through all of the other blockchains inside of our network with a for each loop. And as we iterate through the other blockchains, if we find a longer chain, we then update these three variables to reflect that every single time that we find a longer chain. Then when our for each loop is done running, we will know if there's a chain inside of our network that is longer than the blockchain that is hosted on our current node. And if there is a longer chain found inside of our network, we will have access to the pending transactions of that blockchain. So after our for each loop has ran, we will then have access to all of the data necessary to replace the current blockchain that's hosted on our current node. So we then come down here and we say, if there is no new longer chain, or if there is no chain longer than the blockchain hosted on the node we are on right now, or if there is a longer chain inside of the network, but that chain is not valid, then in both of these cases, we do not want to replace the blockchain that's hosted on this current node. So we simply send back a response that says, the current chain has not been replaced. On the other hand, if there is a longer chain inside of our network, and that chain is valid, this is the case in which we want to replace the blockchain that's hosted on our current node. So in order to replace this blockchain, we simply say bitcoin.chain equals the new longest chain. And we say bitcoin.pending transactions equals the new pending transactions, which are the pending transactions from that new longest chain. And then we simply send back the response that says, this chain has been replaced, and we send back the new blockchain. And that's it. That's how our consensus algorithm and our consensus endpoint will work. And one thing that I want to clean up is that this statement doesn't actually have to be an else if statement. It can just be an else statement. I simply wrote this out initially just to clarify better 
what is happening inside of this else statement. So right now I'm just going to delete this if part. Cool. So that's it for our consensus algorithm and our consensus endpoint. In the next video, we will test this consensus endpoint to make sure that it works properly. I'll see you there.